Thanks so much for tuning into this video, which contains a reflection for Sunday the 11th of October 2020. It sits alongside two other videos, one with the readings for today, upon which the reflection is based, and these are readings from the 32nd chapter of the book of Exodus and the 4th chapter of Paul's letter to the Philippians. There is also another video with prayers for this Sunday, and if you choose to share in all or any of these, then I hope you will find blessing from Almighty God. My name is Brian Hillsley, and I have the privilege of being the minister of Aberlady and Gullen Parish Churches here in beautiful East Lothian in Scotland. We are part of the Church of Scotland, which is Presbyterian of denomination. Yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son. Those two lines complete what was for a long time Britain's favourite poem, according anyway to BBC polls. It might still be number one, although I suspect, understandably enough, that the passage of time and revisionist views both of colonialism and gender equality may now have relegated it to a lower place. The poem is, of course, If by Rudyard Kipling, and its opening lines are even better known than those which close the work. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. Leave aside the colonial associations of Rudyard Kipling and the masculine tone which he brings to a crescendo in the final line. There is still much of value in this poem, speaking as it does of virtues which remain laudable, indeed some may say essential. Fundamentally, the poem speaks of a state of being which is anchored much more deeply than in just the shifting sands of race or of position, of fame or of fortune. Whereas Kipling includes no overt Christian reference within his lyric, it's difficult to believe that his education and his upbringing were not significantly influenced by the same Victorian Christian ethic which inspired his contemporary Priscilla Owens to write the hymn Will Your Anchor Hold in the Storms of Life? Shifting to a very different genre, I've recently rediscovered the delights of the works of Jill Murphy. Some of you will be familiar with Five Minutes Peace and Peace at Last, imaginatively illustrated and cleverly compiled books for young children. In Five Minutes Peace, Mrs. Large, an elephant and mother of three children, longs for a quiet bath and a read of the paper, respite from all the domestic chaos around her. Instead, she finds herself constantly interrupted and eventually sharing the bath with her loud and playful offspring. That which is highly amusing to a child also speaks cleverly to the longing every busy adult has for some peace and some quiet. I heard my wife Dorothy reading one of Jill Murphy's books to our granddaughter Sophia earlier this week, and that image came immediately again to my mind when I began to prepare for today using the two readings. In the Exodus passage, it is the very antithesis of inner peace which afflicts the Israelites at the foot of Mount Sinai. Out in the wilderness, which is of course symbolic of their spiritual condition, these erstwhile slaves of the Pharaoh of Egypt are becoming increasingly anxious. Moses has been up the mountain for a long time, lost to them in the mists. And as the time grows ever longer, the people begin to assume that Moses and his God are lost to them completely. 
they bring their anxiety to Aaron, who in the face of crisis turns aside from the new religion into which God has been inducting them, reverting instead to older pagan ways as he gathers all the gold, melts it down and makes an idol in the shape of a calf, perhaps a reference to Canaanite or Egyptian deities which took this form. The Exodus narrative reads very critically of Aaron's actions, for very understandable reasons. But from our perspective, we needn't judge so critically. Reverting to old ways in the face of crisis or pressure is something that we all do. Every golfer among you will know that the natural slice which affects many of us is most likely to raise its ugly head when the pressure is on. And we all know the importance of the teaching and the practice, which in a whole range of life situations help us to keep our natural anxiety and our panic at bay and a cool head in control as a consequence. All such teaching in whatever area of life tries to anchor us in a deeper place so that we're not blown off course by the stormy circumstances of any particular moment. Many years ago, I was going through a period of uncertainty and consequent anxiety. My sister sent me a card to say she was praying for me and to quote in the card some words of the Apostle Paul writing to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Over the years since then, I have learned more and more of Christian spirituality and of Christian practice. And I have also observed the explosion of interest in techniques such as mindfulness, an explosion of interest caused by the significant increase in the incidence of stress and anxiety in our so-called developed world. As a consequence, I've come to recognise that whereas Christian spirituality does not have the monopoly upon related wisdom, it most certainly has a grasp of some fundamental truths concerning anxiety. For a start, there is a rich strand in Christian spirituality which encourages us to count our blessings. It is there very strongly in Ignatian spirituality, which seeks to help us to live in a way where we notice the blessings around us, appreciate them gratefully and find our anchor point in that. Similarly, in the parable of the two householders, which Jesus foretells, Jesus tells, there is a highlighting of the importance of firm foundations when the storms of life rage around us. Both of these things come through in Paul's teaching to the Philippians, and that teaching points towards this peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, a peace that's so entirely unconnected to immediate circumstances that it can, to the outsider, seem to be naive and irrational. Of course, it is irrational. It goes beyond reason to a deeper spiritual place. Nowhere is this peace which passes all understanding more evident than in the accounts of Jesus before his accusers and during the time of his torture and death. Pontius Pilate, who represents worldly power and wisdom, cannot understand it. 
Jesus looks square in the eye of all the pain and disgrace which the power of the world is throwing upon him. And he focuses his heart and his mind upon the blessings and the grace of God. Paul might be describing just that when he says in verse 8 of chapter 4, Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Jesus was the very incarnation of that, and from that came resurrection life and this peace which surpasses all understanding. Paul understood that very well. And hence, he was able to write to the Romans these stirring words, with which I will finish. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. To God the Father. God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be all praise and all thanksgiving, time without end. Amen.